I, I'm just going to do a vlog, talk about my life. I'm not going to try and talk about wisdom or advice today. It's, uh, nobody watches these, so it's really quite irrelevant what I talk about. It's, I mean, it doesn't matter if no one's ever going to see it except me. Uh, people don't even stumble on it. It's kind of weird. Zero views. Zero views. Well, you know, one of the values of this vlog is, uh, for me, a decade from now, uh, being able to look back at myself. It's April. Uh, I guess that's kind of obvious because I'll have the recording day. The weather got really warm and I got a whole pile of work done in the backyard here in the house. Um, and then the weather got cold and I had to stop because my fingers still can't take the cold. And um, I'm down to the point now where I'm waiting for the rest of the water to thaw and get pumped out. And I've got to sort stones from dirt and clean them off and then pile them and then I can list the stones. Most of the, I think there's still a couple of rocks in the bottom, but I'm not sure. It might only be stones. Depends on what fell down. I did not lay rocks out in the bottom of the pond when I built it. Um, what I did was I, I made a bed of stones in the bottom. Uh, but I didn't put rocks down there. So there won't be any more of those big expensive rocks for me to pull out. I've got those all piled up on um, pallets in the backyard. I've got red sandstone and yellow sandstone and gray slate. And um, all of those I've got both in chunk and flat paving stone styles. So there's, there's quite, a lot of, quite a lot of rock there. And I'm, I've been listing items for sale, and for the first little while it went well, and since then it just kind of stopped. Nobody's responding to any of my ads. So I'm, I'm feeling, feeling a bit non-positive, if you will, negative. I'm not feeling very positive about my ability to sell the stuff in the backyard. Um, so, but the main priority right now isn't to turn things to cash but to get things out of the way so I could put the bus back there because it costs us a hundred bucks a month every time the month rolls over and it doesn't matter if it's there a week or all month it's the same price hundred bucks so we'd really like to get the bus here by the end of April but as I say the weather turned cold again we even had snow and um, my fingers can't take the cold the, the chemo that I got over the winter time has affected my nerves and and I'm very like to say you're sensitive to cold doesn't really express it when my fingers drop below body temperature they tingle and the lower down they go the louder the tingle gets and it at first it's like static on the nerves but it becomes extremely painful pins like pins being jabbed into my fingers at the moment they're they're slightly cooler than body temperature, and they feel fuzzy. Um, I guess people call that numbness because it does overlay your ability to sense. So there's just slightly less sensation. And um, the chemotherapy's over, and it didn't go away after a week or so. It's been, I think, three weeks now since the last chemo treatment, and they're still they're still not better. So this the the damage could last a few months. Some people say it never goes away. Other people um, have, it, it goes away in a year or two. Like, it can take days, weeks, months, or years, and you never know what. So, I'm continuing to take ginkgo biloba. Oh, I didn't take any pills this morning. I get sick and tired of messing around with pills. So, I didn't take any, including the ginkgo biloba. As you can see, I got fat again. Um, it's causing me a lot of dysphoria. Um, when I look in the mirror I s and, and in, in the video, um, I'm seeing a fat lady again, and a fat lady with a bag glued to her stomach. It's just, yeah, it's causing me a lot of dysphoria and a lot of unhappiness, but the best solution is I don't look in the mirror. And um, I'm trying to eat, I'm trying to, I'm trying to eat properly to lose weight. Uh, I'm trying to resist cravings for things that are bad for me and high calorie and trying to gauge how much food I need to eat and 
you know, when you're just sitting on your butt day in and day out, at best knitting or sewing, or playing a card game, or I get so bored. I want to, I want to be moving. I want to be up and doing, and there's just nothing in the house that seems worth the energy. And, and you know, when you start out sitting on your ass. It gets better and be easier and easier to just continue to sit on your ass. So I've been doing a lot of ass sitting. I ran out of hash, and there wasn't any money yet in the bank to buy more. But then yesterday I went to see a credit counselor because we had a, an income tax bill come in. We failed to file for three years, and when we finally did file for all three years, the bill was monumental. Uh, bad enough that there's no way we can pay it, not even if we sell everything. So, um, that's been causing me a great deal of stress, and I've seen a credit counselor, and we don't have the money. We actually don't have the income um, to pay these bills, and that's weird, because we're making lots of money. Uh, one of the problems is we're spending twice as much a month on groceries as the average person does. I can't figure out why. It's not like I'm going in the store and I'm <coughs> picking out gourmet pizzas and T-bone steaks and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm going to be studying for the next month to figure out. And maybe just shopping more carefully will solve that. I don't know. Uh, if I get into it, it'll start upsetting me again. I finished my trench coat. Uh, hang on, let me pause the video, go get it and show you because it's pretty awesome. And yet at the same time, really ridiculous uh, and I feel a little silly when I wear it but then I got my neighbor to try it on and she looked really good in it so I think maybe what I'm seeing is the loop tape in my head that my 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 my, my society and culture and family put in my head when I was young you know the last 40 years um, has seen massive social changes in in in, in society, massive changes in society from you look like a clown to wow what nice bright colors and um, I still have the you look like a clown loop tape stuck in my head. Oh, I wish that bird wouldn't do that. It's so hard to take. There's nothing I can do about it. He just goes and goes and goes and you can't make him stop. So hang on, let me pause and go get the coat. Well, instead of hitting the pause, I hit the stop. So now I have to piece these two together. That's all right. So this is the coat here. Um, it's got a white belt. It's got uh, it's got six buttons. It's got an equally brightly colored liner, and something just fell on the floor. And uh, so yeah, and it's it's got it, it it trails down to just below my knees. And uh, I've also got buttons like this. There's one here underneath that I can poke through and one here. And all of the buttons, yes, they're special. They're special buttons. These are the buttons I made on the 3D printer with hand colored filament, which plugged up the extruder, which is why I can't keep making them. <laughs> uh, the best one is the one on the belt. The belt was designed to be just tied up, but how could I not put this incredible colorful button on it. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus on it. Well anyway, it's got all kinds of layers of color in there. So, that's the coat I made. It's incredibly warm. I waxed. All of the exterior fabric is waxed so for weatherproofing. Um, literally, I... Go away, Piper. Literally waxed. I melted wax candles and painted it onto the fabric before I dyed it, giving me waxed fabric. Uh, I did a little research and discovered that that's pretty much all it takes. This is still one of my favorite styles of vape pen. And in this one here, I like this, but for some darn reason, the uh, element burns out really fast and you wind up with that nasty taste. all over the, the stuff. Yeah, it tastes gross, and I just changed the element, so that's frustrating. And then there's this one here, which 
is really hard to smoke. I don't know why, but it makes me, it, it, it bothers my lungs when I smoke it. I, I find that really strange. But I like the way it glows. Like, <coughs> well, you can't see it in this light. It gets a dull red, reddish glow which shows up in a darker environment. But <coughs> for some reason, like it produces a nice cloud of smoke, but I can't take it. I, I cough every time. Still working on it. <coughs> See? <coughs> so that's frustrating. I don't know what the difference is, why this one doesn't do that. I've got another one of these that isn't burnt out, but I, it's on a lanyard and I wear it when I'm out. That and uh, this call, stuff called mullen. This is supposed to be for... Oh, lovely. I don't know why, but the video's backwards. That's really goofy. Yeah, it, I don't know why do all front-facing cameras cameras have to give you a mirror image with no setting to turn off? It's probably a setting I haven't been able to find. Um, but uh, since I ran out of hash, my craving to smoke something has been <laughs> constant, constant and annoying. And uh, between the and and you know I, I this doesn't. These things don't quite cut it, uh, but the mulling leaf has been satisfying for whatever reason, the urge to smoke. So, yeah, I've worked out that I, I, I simply can't afford to keep smoking hash, and I certainly can't suggest that I need it anymore. I, I needed it really badly last summer when I was in all that pain, and, and last year. And I would say that I needed it quite badly over the winter to help me cope with the effects of the chemo, but... Not anymore. Uh, I had a CT scan that last week. They're going to have a look and see if all the cancer is gone through the um, computed topographical scan. It takes a whole bunch of x-rays from everywhere and then com computes them to create a 3D topographical map of your interior and presumably it'll show up any cancer bits. I don't know. They'll let me know when I have my appointment in May. And uh, there was an earlier appointment if I was in a hurry, but the earlier appointment was very early, like 8 o'clock in the morning. And I went, well, when's your next afternoon appointment? She says, oh, four weeks from now. Okay, said I. I'll wait four weeks for my results. I don't really care. I really don't. I mean, I don't want to have another round of chemo. I don't want to have my chest cracked open and chunks taken off my lungs. I don't want that. Uh, but I, I do want a mastectomy. And I am kind of hoping that there's a little breast cancer or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Workers' Compensation Board. I That's where apparently you apply if you want money for asbestos. And because they work on forms and lists instead of taking a look at individual cases for the most part, as far as I can tell, it's probably very faint hope. Um, the bottom line is, even though asbestos can be implicated in colorectal cancer, officially it's just not considered common enough to give a damn, and uh, you have to have mesothelioma lung cancer. You just have to, or you don't qualify. And uh, my few lung nodules will probably be passed off as metast metastases of my colorectal cancer. So. I don't have a lot of hope, but I, I did win 10 bucks in the lottery on Saturday. <laughs> I need an infusion of cash that's in the tens of thousands, not the tens of dollars. <laughs> if we could just, if we could just get like 50 grand from a lottery or, or the, the asbestos trust fund to, to cover lost wages or... I don't know, something? It would really help with the finances right now. Because then we could pay off we could pay off some of the debts that's costing us so much to service. So anyway. That's been causing me a lot of grief. Um, you know, we have to figure out how to pare it down. Definitely, if we could sell the house and move it to the bus and the sooner we can the sooner we can get living cheap enough to be able to pay what's left of the debt because we can pay off the high interest debts um, and reduce our payments. I've been having so much trouble sitting upright. 
and the back spasms as a result of not sitting upright have been nasty. And I, I've been trying to figure out, you know, why am I slouching so much? And I'm not slouching because I'm lazy, and I'm not slouching because it's a habit, and I'm not slouching because gravity has better memory than me. I'm slouching because it's a body language expression of mood, and the mood is one of tension and depression. I've been really down lately because of these finances, because the Canada Revenue Agency keeps calling us on the phone and it feels impossible and it's very frustrating. I'm applying for taxpayer relief with the Canada Revenue Agency. My sister gave me a hand with the cover letter and the form and um, at some point today I have to make copies of all of that and assemble some envelopes and uh, probably fax off copies to the guy I spoke to in Vancouver that I spoke to to try it. He gave me until the 28th before they start legal action, which, you know. From what I can tell, legal action consists primarily of putting a hold on your bank accounts, which is not that disturbing, really, because, you know, if they put a hold on the bank accounts, we've already got some plans in place for alternative ways to cash checks or not, not take checks at all, just take cash. Alternatives um, around the hold on the bank account, but it, it could be a real nuisance to have to go around and pay every bill by hand every month going from door to door like I did that time. Because I've been in this boat before. I, I, went, I went broke after university. I couldn't pay the student loans. Um, and then I, I had a credit card debt that was not bad but it was sucking a lot of money. And that wasn't the problem. The problem, everything came to a halt when I acquired a massive long distance phone bill as a result of cheating the system ineffectively. I, I was, this woman that I made friends with in Vancouver was like, oh, I've got this, uh, this uh, number, you dial this number, you put it in, you, you know, you put it in the phone and then you dial the number of the people you're calling and your long distance is free, it just goes off just the computer just goes, oh, that's a, a an employee, a phone system employee. I don't need to charge that. And it turns out that no, it goes to an account where some human being occasionally looks over, and said human being went, oh, look at that. Look at all these phone calls coming from this telephone line that's not owned by an employee, and they sent me a bill for enough money that it just it just cracked me. So, um, I did eventually do a bankruptcy and. And get ex get get that cleared because after bankruptcy, seven years later, they clear you. And it taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about budgeting. It taught me about the processes. But what it also did was it forced me to stop using banks entirely because they were, you know, we're going to garnish your wages. Well, I didn't have wages. We're going to garnish your bank account. Okay, bye bye bank account. And I would just either I at, back in those days you could actually cash a check at the bank it was drawn on. That was one of the services offered in re return for the money that you spend uh, every time you write a check because you have to pay a service charge for that check and then they started going oh we're gonna we're gonna charge you a flipping fortune for coming in and, and then after that it was like we're not even gonna charge you we're not we're just gonna refuse to cash a check you have to open an account which is like tightening the thumb screws is like it, it, it felt very much like uh, tightening a trap you know like like when you make those traps for wild animals that bring them closer and closer to a gate that leads them into death. And that, that, that's pretty much what the banks did to ensure wage slavery, to ensure compliance with the capitalist money system. And um, there are still ways around it. Like I said, you can get cash and there are check cashing places that will check, cash your checks for a fairly small amount of money. And uh, that's, that's what we'll have to do, that and barter if, they, if it goes to that. But at the moment, what we're trying to do is to get them to give us, um, they, they can give you up to 10 years to pay, and that's really all I need, because I can pay it in, in I can pay it in five years or less, um, depending on how much our house is worth when we sell it, depending on how much we're able to pare down now, um, and reduce our, our debts before we sell a house. I have every intention of paying these bills, I just don't have the budget on that. Uh, Here's the problem. Here's why I haven't been budgeting. I mean, yes, I learned how to budget. I know how to budget. You say, this is how much I get each month. These are my fixed expenses. This is what's left over. And if this isn't enough to cover all of the discretionary, 
then you try to get rid of some of these, like, you know, I, I just canceled the satellite TV, for example. And you just, you go, okay, well, here's something I'm paying for that I can live without. Gone. Money comes back in, and now you've got your, your discretionary money. Okay, you know, I, 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 can, I can stop eating as much, or I can, I can stop driving my car, or, you know, you, you pare it down. And sometimes I think, well, what, what if I just took the license off the smart car for a year? That's 100 bucks a month right there, and the car could just sit in the backyard idle. And we'll put the plates back on it later, but that's really impractical because Dan's truck is an expensive way to get around, and otherwise it's all bicycle. And I'm okay with bicycle, but, you know, we do use the smart car quite a bit. I just wish it didn't cost so much for plates. It costs more than, I mean, the, the truck's only 60 bucks a month. And, uh, but each year the smart car goes down a little bit. It went from 104 to 99 so maybe it'll only be 50 or 60 bucks in another couple of years. It's a ripoff, really. Uh, it's supposed to be calculated less based on wheel base. But then the, the truck is, um, I think, 20 years old. So the bus is really cheap to license. It's like 80 bucks a year because we licensed it as an antique, which again comes back to the smart car because the smart car is my primary vehicle. That allows me to license the bus as an antique. If it was my only licensed vehicle, they'd be like, uh -uh. you can't license your primary vehicle as an antique. And then I'd be paying probably through the nose. So that's where all of that is. Um, Timmy's still just as adorable as he ever was. Piper's a typical annoying high energy dog that doesn't get anywhere near enough exercise. Hello, darling. And, um, and I, I rediscovered, I found, didn't know where they were, and found these guys. And uh, they've, got this, they've got this little disc in here that you, s you, you, you press on it and it clicks. And when it clicks, the entire package crystallizes and fills up with these crystals. And until it's finished crystallizing, it's hot. And so when my fingers are having a lot of trouble, I crack one of these. And then, no, you don't throw them out because they're not done. At this point, you stick them in a pot of boiling water and you get this again. You let them cool off, start all over. Hey, you want to watch it? It's kind of fun. There. And now, it's already warming up. I can warm up my hands on it. See how it all crystallized? Now for the next half hour or so, this thing is going to provide heat to my fingers. And really gentle heat too. It's, it's, it doesn't get warm enough to burn. It's a little too hot almost, but not bad. And if I put it through my fingernails, it's pretty good. And, oh, it gives my fingers some relief. And it's so goofy having my fingers be cold and pinny while I'm half sweating from a hot flash. Yeah, it's been one hell of a year, and it's going to be a hell of a year more. But uh, it's a forward-looking year, at least. You know, the cancer is behind me, I think. And the bus is bought, and I've got all kinds of solutions already in mind. I figured out, for instance, the kitchen sink in the bus. Um, really simple solution. I've got spare fountain pumps around here. Uh, a fountain pump is just just a little little square pump you put in, in some water and then it sends the water up. And all I have to do is put that in a bucket of cold water, bucket of clean water and pump it with a tube up to the sink with a little switch switching power supply so I turn the pump on and off. And then um, the one five gallon bucket with the hose coming out of it with the pump and one on top of that on the lid with a drain from the sink for the wastewater and bam I've got a and, and the two the two buckets one on top of the other gives you the perfect height for a sink and so then I've got a little portable kitchen that's really easy to deal with so that'll and I've already got a spare pump in fact I bought a brand new one last summer because one of my favorite fountains the pump died and I never did install it and so I'm still not going to and uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll sell the fountain eventually when I get around to posting it. And, uh, like I say, posting has been kind of a drag. People are like, they come over here, they're like, they're going to buy a, 
a sixty dollar item for twenty twenty bucks, and they come over and they're like, "Yeah, I like it, and yeah, okay, I want it, and okay, let's load it up." And then, oh, by the way, will you take ten dollars for it? I'm like, and uh, the first guy that did that, he took five bucks off the top, and I was so overwhelmed. I just went, "Sure, yeah, whatever, okay." I just wanted it over with, and then I I started getting mad. It's like the nerve of these people was already loaded in his vehicle. How dare he dicker at that point in the process? And I just kept getting madder and madder. So the next the next couple times people did it, I just went, no. You know, I'm just, I'm not into dickering. If I want to dicker, if I wanted to dicker on a $25 price, I'd have told you $40 and played the dickering game. When I was young, I thought that was fun, but I don't anymore. I just want to get it over with. I have social anxiety or phobia or whatever you want to call it. I have a lot of work to do. I feel sick. I've got backache and headache and pain ache. I, I, I don't want to mess around playing this silly little game of I posted it up way ahead hoping I'd get more than what I actually expect to get and you're going to lowball me hoping to get it for less than you expected and then when we're done arguing we'll wind up at the price that I would have posted it at in the first place. So I just posted at that price. And you get these jerks that still want a dicker. It's obviously good price. So, yeah, some things are clearly overpriced. I've got a collectible model DeLorean that didn't sell on eBay, and it didn't sell on Kijiji, and it didn't sell on Facebook. And I'm like, you know what? I like the stupid thing. I'll keep it. I'll sell it at a yard sale. I'll give it to someone who loves it. Doesn't matter. At this point, I don't have to get rid of anything. I'm going to be doing a lot of that in the coming year, but first we'll see what fits in the bus, and then we'll see what I have to sell. And I can always run a yard sale. I've got a couple of neighbors who'd be happy to join me in a yard sale, making it a lot easier, because then there'd be someone to monitor it when I go to the bathroom. <laughs> Not that yard sales are much fun. So, I think this video has gone on more than long enough. So, um... Yes. I have no final words. Bye.